What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing something that I've been putting off for a long time. We're finally gonna start working on the S14 again. Uh, so basically I've been having a fueling issue for a really long time that I needed to sort out. It's like slow starting, the, you know, the fuel system doesn't wanna hold prime and I diagnosed it, tracked it down to being a bad fuel pressure regulator. So uh, my Nismo FPR that I've been running for years finally just stopped working on me. So yeah, today we're gonna to be pulling off the Nismo FPR and we're gonna be setting up a aftermarket adjustable fuel pressure regulator. So let's go ahead and open that up and see which part we're gonna be throwing on today. I uh, went to Njuka Racing and shopped around for a good fuel pressure regulator. And uh, this is what I ended up going with. Now I know there's a lot of options out there on the market but I just decided to go ahead and get the ISR one. They kind of had a kit that was SR20 ready, came with all the proper fittings and everything. And this is the V2 version. And it actually, from what I could tell, looks to be pretty good quality. It was priced fairly similarly to uh, a lot of the other big name brand FPRs. And it's actually got a pretty good look to it. Okay, so we've got what looks to be a pretty good quality uh, fuel pressure gauge. So this is the fitting that's going to replace the current fuel pressure regulator. Now I'm not going to be changing up my, uh, my fuel rail or anything. So this is a pretty basic install. I don't really see any reason to go top feed injectors or get a billet fuel rail or do AN fuel lines or anything like that. I'm only making 300 horsepower right now. And honestly, this setup will be fine for anything more than that as well. So they gave us barb fittings so I can continue to use regular fuel hose. And they were actually nice enough to give me some fuel hose as well. And this is... Yeah, so this is a Gates hose. This is what I usually use. And this is a really high quality hose. I have like a whole reel of it over here. But uh, yeah, I mean, this was priced almost the same as a FPR without any of the fittings or anything. And they gave us a bunch of good stuff, including the gauge. So I'm not really sure if you can beat this. I guess only time will tell if this setup will be reliable or not. But ISR has been really upping their game the last like four or five years, I would say. So I'm pretty confident this is gonna work out just fine. So I know it's been a while since you guys have seen the bay. Um, a little bit has changed in here. I finished up the catch can. I actually shortened it and welded it back together, made a nice bracket for it and got the AN lines fitted for the final time. So that came out pretty good. Um, I threw in this line to sort of with my with my fuel pressure gauge this is a, a aeromotive one and that was just sort of there to help me diag the situation and yeah it turns out that this uh nismo fpr that i bought many years ago failed on me the housing actually came loose and it was like leaking vacuum and i couldn't get it down to the right pressure so just as like a quick bit of information the reason why i have to use an fpr is because I have an aftermarket fuel pump and this FPR allows me to regulate the flow of the aftermarket pump down to the correct pressure. So we needed at 43.5 and the lowest I could get this was like 46, 47 and it was also leaking fuel back into the tank and it wasn't holding prime, which meant it was having a, a rough start. So at least I hope that's what was causing it. We're gonna find out today. First thing we have to do is pull off the old FPR. And then we have to figure out our mounting situation for the aftermarket fuel pressure regulator. I went ahead and sort of like threw it together here. Probably gonna have to, no, this looks right actually. So yeah, uh, ISR actually did something really cool and they spaced out the mounting holes on the bracket to fit perfectly right here. And I think that's probably one of the better solutions for it that I can come up with. So uh, I think that's where we're gonna throw it. And essentially this line is gonna be going 
through the FPR. And then, uh, yeah, we should be good to go ahead. This is a very easy install. Of course, the like I said earlier, the FPR will be getting replaced by this. So we'll just have a straight fitting. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw this on a time lapse and get this thing assembled and we'll see if it resolves the issue. So the FPR is fully installed. Um, this blue vacuum hose is all I really had for the time being. I will replace that pretty soon um, whenever I get the chance. But one issue I did run into was that the gauge failed pretty much instantly. It's like sitting at 20 PSI over. And uh, yeah, so that's a little unfortunate. Looked like a cheap gauge. Thankfully, I had a backup. And uh, worst case, they do give you a plug in case you don't want to run a gauge so i got the thing running and i set the fuel pressure correctly and i'm still sort of having a hard start issue so for one thing it is dropping fuel pressure fairly quickly uh after turning the engine off which a lot of people say is normal some people say their their system holds pressure but i'm sort of leaning towards it being a part of the problem um Let's go ahead and see if it wants to fire. All right, so it started up fairly easily there, but in the past with this motor set up the same way, it would start like almost instantly. And, um, and this is honestly started a lot easier than it normally does. Usually it's like cranking for a solid 20 seconds before it wants to fire up and then I have to give it gas. There's definitely an issue here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull the fuel pump and inspect the fuel line inside the tank and make sure there's no leaks inside the tank. And yep, as we can see, the fuel pressure is slowly dropping from 40 PSI. Uh, so yeah, I still got some things to figure out, but this is one thing out of the way, so. I gotta move on to the next thing and hopefully I can figure it out. It's all a part of the process, guys. So I am getting ready to pull this fuel pump assembly out of the S14 to continue tracking down this fueling issue. But I actually did go and do some driving this past weekend. And I wanted to go ahead and throw this in as sort of a little bit of bonus content. I really didn't film much to really justify making a whole video out of it. Um, and also I'm, I'm kind of out of practice, so my driving isn't really top notch, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Would you be interested in seeing more driving stuff or should I just stick to uh, wrenching on cars like uh, like most of my content is? Um, but yeah, anyways, this was my first time at the compound. A little bit out of practice. All in all, I had a fun day. I really felt like I was getting back into the groove of things again, even though it's been a pretty long time since I've driven. So uh, yeah, it feels good to know I still sort of got it. And uh, I do plan on making a point to drive more in the future. So yeah, here's some bonus content of a uh, me driving the G35 at the compound. So quite a bit has changed on this car since the last time you guys saw it. Um, my buddy Adam has put some really cool parts on this car. So we actually got a GK Tech Hydro. We got what looks like a nice Nardi wheel. We ended up putting some dual rear calipers on. I think it's a GK Tech dual rear kit. So that's really nice. We got a true rear coilovers in the rear now and i think there's some steering mods as well i'm not totally sure sounds like it's got a little exhaust leak up front right now but other than that we've just sort of cleaned it up a bit threw a wing on it and really we haven't put too much into it it's sort of maintaining the simple seat time sort of build going on here so yeah we're gonna put it to the test today see how well it drives and see if it holds up it should be a really good shakedown for the car. So uh, let's see what it does. So it's been a while. It's been a while. I'm a little rusty.
What do you think about the course, Adam? The course is tight. It's tight, technical, but goddamn is it fun. Yeah, it looks really good. So I hope you guys enjoyed those little clips of my day at the compound. Let me know in the comments if you want me to record more next time I go drive. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and continue on with the S14. So the next thing I want to do is get inside the fuel tank. I want to go ahead and pull the... Uh, the pump assembly out and inspect the line and make sure there's no no issues going on inside the tank you can see my fuel pump wiring here i am running a walbro 525 i believe so i have some uh some aftermarket wiring going on to be able to power that um let me go ahead and pop off this cover so i can kind of show you what's going on here i do want to fix one other thing while i'm in here um yeah so let me get this cover off and show you guys what i want to change so here's the fuel pump assembly removed from the tank. I was really hoping to find an obvious issue with one of the fuel lines here leaking, like a pinhole leak or something, but <clears throat> it looks like they're still intact. I'm probably still gonna replace them, just a preventative maintenance thing. Also, these fuel hose clamps are starting to like corrode, as is like some of the assembly. This clamp as well. It's to be expected with the 85. These kinds of things happen. Um, to continue sort of looking for what could be causing the issue, I'm going to go ahead and pull this fuel pump sock off and see if I can see any clogging, any signs of debris in the pump. Maybe that could potentially issue, potentially be the issue. There's also the chance that the internal check valve is bad. And uh, once I sort of look through all this, replace the lines and address a few other things, I will be setting up some sort of way to test the check valve and, and see what we're working with. I've got an idea of how I'm gonna do that. So one other thing that does need to be addressed is the wiring. So essentially this pump draws a lot more amperage than your standard pump. And so that means you gotta run bigger wires, or really it just means that some of the connectors from the factory setup are not usable. So what I did was I repinned the original plugs, and you can see that it's starting to melt in this plug. It's kind of a little more difficult to see on this side, but you can see some signs of damage. Um, I kind of cleaned it out, but there were some issues on, on this plug as well. So what I'm gonna end up doing here is uh, putting a bulkhead in on this to sort of have a direct pass through so I don't have to rely on these old factory connectors. I think I'm gonna put it right here. So that means I gotta sort of like cut out some of these ribs, drill a hole, put the bulkhead on, and then have a more direct wire connection that should help. That should help the electrical issue. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, yeah, hopefully once I get this all back together, I can sort of track down whatever the issue is that's causing the slow start. I'm leaning towards a bad internal check valve. So once I get it all back together, we'll have to set up a test for that and uh, see what we can find. So here's the fuel pump assembly, completely uh, reassembled. Here's the bulkhead I ended up using. So now we don't have any more uh, melting connectors, hopefully. There's no resistance in the circuit. Um, I would have liked to get the proper connector for this but these should work fine for the time being uh, this is really how i should have done it from the beginning so you can see the wires pass right through and i had to remove a little bit of material but yeah so that's done properly now even if i don't really resolve the fueling issue 
which I don't have much faith that I will from what I've done here. This is something that I've been putting off for a long time, and it's a uh, it's something that I really needed to do. So clean the sock out. These are kind of hard to find. Um, I'm sure I could order one online, but clean it out as best I could. This is sort of a look at how I fit this 525 pump on here. I sort of just use this stainless steel bolt and clamp to keep everything nice and secure because you don't want your fuel pump really like moving around inside the tank. So, yep, everything's wired up. Fresh hoses everywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this back in, wire it back up. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna replace the fuel filter as well and see if we still have a slow start issue. Let's, uh, let's hope and pray this resolves it. So I waited until the next morning. If it's going to give me a slow start issue, it's gonna do it now because first start is always the worst. So let's see what it does all right so right away the pump sounds like it's a lot more healthy that's probably due to the uh improved wiring oh, almost started Yeah, so it's really not doing great. This is pretty similar to what it has been doing. So I gotta prime the pump again. So the issue clearly has not been fully resolved. Let's see if we're at least holding pressure. So it looks like it's doing a better job of holding pressure after shutting it down. So I, I, think, uh, I think I'm getting a little bit closer to figuring this out. The next thing I'm going to do is replace that fuel filter. So... That's sort of my last option, really, other than taking a look at the injectors. Then I have to move on to consider some other things, like perhaps there's something up with the ignition system. So, yep, just got to keep on diagnosing this thing. And this is not the uh, most fun part about owning these cars, but sometimes you got to go through it, get it running right. So I put the camera down and really went through this thing. Um, I, I did a ton of stuff from cleaning the MAF to trying new spark plugs, new coil packs, new coil pack harness. I tried swapping the TPS sensor and um, there's still a few more things on the list that I really want to try. Um, I really want to take a look at the injectors. I want to pull those out. I want to try to clean up the throttle body, although I, I really doubt that has anything to do with it. Uh, the other thing I can try is a known working crank angle sensor. I can try resetting the timing and checking mechanical timing while I'm at it. But honestly, this video is already getting way too long. So we may not have fully resolved the issue that I was trying to, uh, to fix this video, but the video is getting way too long already. So I'm going to have to finish it off here. Um, Hopefully by the next time I'll have it figured out. Maybe if you guys have any experience with these cars, you can uh, let me give me some ideas in the comments of what you think might be wrong with this thing. I, I've honestly been chasing this issue ever since I put this motor in this chassis. I'm really, I mean, for a while it ran fine. And then like, yeah, so I don't know. It's just something that picked up eventually. It's really unfortunate. I'm sure I'll get it sorted eventually. Hopefully it's nothing in the motor. Like, uh, I guess that's probably the next thing I should do is check compression, make sure that there's, I don't know, try to get a bore scope in there and take a look at the valves and everything. But you know, the thing pulls really hard. It feels like it's all there. The AFRs are on point. Uh, once it does get started up, it, it runs pretty good. 
with the exception of it like dying if I let off the throttle too quick sometimes. But you know, after everything I've done and I still, if I still do those other things I've mentioned and it's still giving me issues, I guess, uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to get a Link ECU and some top feed injectors and like a few other extra supporting mods and hopefully maybe I can tune it out. I really don't know. Uh, let's hope it doesn't come to that. But honestly, I, I need a good standalone anyways. So it wouldn't be the, the worst thing in the world if I have to do that. But uh, yeah, I've got a bunch more stuff planned for this car. I've actually got some parts in right now, but I didn't want this video to go past like 22 minutes, you know, so uh, the analytics kind of show that you guys don't don't really aren't really interested in the longer videos, but uh, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments what you think. Would you want longer videos? Maybe you want shorter videos. I can do 10 minute long videos and upload more regularly. But yeah, let me know. Um, I guess that's where we're going to end it. I should have another video up in about a week. So subscribe, stay tuned for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.